So let's now move into the user experience for Joe and his screen reader. So we've covered the area of understanding that widgets don't update the code. So Joe would need to activate the widget and then hope that the widget, one, is easy to use and second, adds the functionality and the, and the sort of accessibility that has not been added in the code. So let's, let's look at what that looks like. So first I want Joe to, and we're looking at Joe's screen right now. I want Joe to just before activating the widget. So understanding the sort of where the, where the website is before you activate the widget, just to simply tab through some navigation to hear what that navigation sounds like to Joe before he adds the widget experience. If you could do that, Joe. Okay. Um, Press enter to skip to main content. Press enter to skip to main content. Press enter to skip to main content. So I'm tabbing through right now. And so, um, so Joe, I just want to stop you there. And this is why sort of Joe and I do it together. What people can probably see on the screen, if they don't, I would like them to look at the top navigation where it says contact us, login registry. Um, you can see that Joe's actually tabbing through those main uh, top level navigation, but here in skip to main content. So firstly, the website is poorly coded and doesn't give him direction of what those links are. Um, maybe you can carry on, Joe. Enter to skip to main content. Search text edit. Norton Shopping Guarantee 9. Search items now button collapsed. Search items now button collapsed. To active. Search items now button collapsed. To activate press space. Search items now button collapsed. To activate press space bar. Search items now button collapsed. To activate press space bar. Menu. Locksmith store. To move through items press up or down arrow. Sale. We buy remotes. Okay. Menu. So, menu. Uh, just to give you, you know, so actually the, the, the top navigation seemed a little strange, didn't give Joe direction that he could log in or register, um, and for some reasons probably uh, weirdly coded. Um, but if we now actually go and activate the widget, so we saw before when I did testing, none of the code is updated when the widget is activated. What the widget does is provide an alternative way to get an accessible experience. So let's see whether that widget improves the experience for Joe. Um, just a note, the reason why we're making this a recording and not doing it live is it's taken about an hour for me to be Joe's eyes on how to really use this widget in any meaningful way for him. Um, because there's not really a, there's not an easy way for him to, to know what the widget does and how it's meant to improve his experience. And obviously Joe has been using his chosen screen readers um, for a long time. So um, this is all new technology for him. So he, in a way he has to learn a new set of technology even to benefit from the widget. But let's see whether there is any benefit in him using the widget. So Joe, maybe you could activate that widget um, and look to turn on the keyboard commands. Okay. Uh, Escape. Uh, Home. Leaving menus. Combo box. Select here. Uh, hold on. Menu. We escape. Sale. Locksmith store. Leaving menus. Locksmith escape. Just bear with me because Locksmith. I've lost keyboard control on this website. Keyless entry remote. There we go. Norton shopping gear. Accessibility. Press enter to skip to main content. Menu button. Okay. Press enter to enable accessibility. Press enter to skip to main content button. Press, press enter to enable accessibility, accessibility for visually, visually, visually impaired. impaired. To activate button. press, press enter to skip to main. Press press enter to open the user web link accessibility to link our Facebook. Link accessibility company homepage. Press enter to open the user way accessibility menu button. So, press, um, so maybe you could explain firstly what type of experience you're getting trying to open the actual widget right now. Um, right now it's sort of confusing because I'm getting some pieces that have to do with the widget menu and then I'm getting, I just heard something for Facebook. So there's social media stuff thrown in the mix just to make things, uh, 
uh, interesting. Press enter to skip to main content. Press enter to enable. Press enter to open the user way accessibility main link accessibility. Press enter to open. Right. We're going to try this again. Press enter to main content. To activate press space. Press enter to enable accessibility for visually impaired to activate press space. Press enter to enable accessibility for visually impaired. I want you to select that. So let's select it. You are visually impaired. So let's press enter to enable accessibility. Press enter to skip to main content. Press press enter to open the user way access. Press enter press enter to skip to main content. A close menu button. Press press enter press link accessibility company homepage link or Facebook. Um, I just it it just navigating around it if it if it, 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 it i have lost it so i'm going to go back to it again Kayla said, norton shopping accessibility press enter to skip to main content menu frame. button press press enter to enable accessibility for visually impaired okay, so press enter that. to, to press enter to press enable accessibility box. for visually impaired button all right so we've done that okay so we we uh, uh maybe some of us are on the call but which are uh, visually uh, Control you. Okay, you can see that some el some elements of the site have been uh, have been changed in terms of from a sort of font use, font size, color, some contrast dealers, uh, issues. I wanted you to again now go through the tab and see whether that that has to enable accessibility for visually impaired link graphic. Press enter to enable accessibility for visually impaired link graphic. Press enter to enable accessibility for visually. What people should be seeing now is that that, at that top bar again, where we were hearing 4.8 Google customer repeat graphic. 4.8 uh, Google. We're now hearing Google Rob. Link graphic. Can you stop the cursor or unless it's taking control of it? No, I got it. I've stopped it. So where we were hearing before, skip to main contact on contact us and log in and register. There's a there's a message to select it to turn on the accessibility control. The accessibility controls are on. So again, uh, Joe, maybe you can give me your feedback in terms of what has that done for you to sort of like before you were hearing skip to main content. Now you're hearing the open accessibility uh, uh, panel on those links. What does that mean? What is what is that sort of telling you from a user perspective? Well, it's just confusing because I just went through the menu and specifically turned on the controls for visually impaired yet i'm getting you know the only difference is now in that main navigation where those links were it's just the wording it's it instead of uh whatever the wording was earlier for the link that kept repeating now we just have a uh, click here to access the you know the accessibility menu that's that's now the new uh link that's being repeated over and over again, but yet I don't have any access to any, any of the content. So it's, it's extremely frustrating. So one of the things I want to sort of now, like, just, just ask you, cause I, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of explain what we who can visually see what, what's changed on the site is happening. And then maybe you can give me your technical understanding of like, uh, what that might is that useful? Is that a, is that a benefit beyond what you have in your own assistive technology? So right now we've seen that font sizes have increased uh, slightly. Um, font colors have changed and some contrast being put on those. So for example, when it was white on black, which as it wasn't that bad, it's now gone to yellow on black, which is the most contrasting of, of, of colors. So it's tried to emphasize the contrast in for, for navigation. And then there's also this sort of and it looks neat to someone who's visual. There's this sort of little red red uh, uh, square that moves around the focus. Could you explain to me if those are useful for you? Um, uh, we, I'm probably going to uh, say not because you're not very visual, but you also teach people who use Zoom text, which obviously this is aimed more at people who have um, some, some visual impairment, not completely blind, so they're not using screen readers, they're using magnifying. Um, yeah. What does that sound to you like? Does it sound like something they already got, or that's something that's something new and powerful for them to use? No, it's there's there's nothing really new or powerful in it because if if you're a, and I, I am you know a, a prior Zoom text user and I still use it sometimes, uh, but all 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 those things that were mentioned, they have the ability to do already with zoom text you you can enhance focus 
You can change the color scheme of as, as far as how the color scheme is presented visually. So you can use a high contrast color setting. Uh, you can uh, change the cursor enhancements. You, you can do er everything that's sort of being done visually on the screen is already built into the, to the magnification software. So it's, it's doing nothing to be uh, beneficial at all for the, for the, for the, the individual that's using the site. So I think I just want to recap what these widget companies have done is taken old technology and repackaged it. They've delivered in a way that if you don't know anything about accessibility, if you don't know anything about disability in the digital space and what people are using, they've repackaged it to make it look good. Um, but it doesn't do anything that isn't already available by people who already use assistive technology. They will argue that all oh, there's millions and millions of people who are sort of who need benefit, need some of these features, and they're probably right. They do need this bit of benefit and features, but they're not the core people that companies are trying to support with digital accessibility. And they're not the people that are suing companies um, because they can't access their site. So the widgets, in summary, they do not change the code. They do not make it any easier for someone like Joe, who's used to using websites with a screen reader, any easier. Um, and in effect, they add another layer to Joe they make him use another piece of technology that he doesn't want to learn to potentially get no benefit. And as you saw from the actual code value, um, no code value, um, even more confusing for Joe than it was not using the widget. So this is, this is the, uh, the, the presentation that widgets are trying to make. They're trying to make people who don't any, know anything about accessibility, haven't understood what people use already as technology, um, and repackage old technology that's been around 20 years to make it look cool and funky um, and adds no value to the accessibility community as a whole, which is why you won't find any advocate groups advocating for people to put widgets on their site. You won't hear lawyers talking about putting widgets on their site. And all of these sites are still getting sued by lawyers because of their lack of code support and lack of uh, accessibility to people who have got screen readers and are blind. Joe, did you have any uh, uh, closing comments on that? Um, not really. I just uh, uh, this, the the experience with my experience with these when I'm when I'm when I'm dealing with these sites with widgets is in in most cases not a positive experience. Right? The, the, it, it, it's always a, a frustration, and and inevitably in a lot of a lot of instances, I I wind up not really being able to utilize the site at the end of the day and um it, it's it's just a frustrating experience overall great okay so let's go back to the live session and let's start with some uh, q a i think